So what got me into music, um, I grew up in a very kind of musical, artsy household. Uh, my dad was uh, obsessed with music. Uh, he was a drummer in a band growing up in Mexico. Um, he loved rock and roll, so I grew up hearing all those classic rock records, uh, Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix, The Who, Led Zeppelin, Beatles, Jefferson Airplane, all that stuff. Uh, my earliest memories are hearing those records in the house. Um, then as I got older, uh, and playing a lot of the stuff from the 80s, you know, uh, The Police, U2. Uh, so he was really a big influence on my tastes. Um, and there was just always music in the house playing. He played piano, he sang. So I grew up in a musical environment somewhat. Um, at age 14, he bought me a guitar, and I was a bit timid by it. Um, I didn't pick up on it quickly at all, either. Uh, so he, he pushed me and forced me to take lessons. And I took lessons for a year, and uh, basically the teacher taught me the basic chords and scales, and then started having me bring in songs I wanted to learn. So I did that for a year. Um, and then after a year of lessons, um, that was it. I wanted to go off on my own and learn things, and so that's uh, that's how I got into all of this. How would I describe the sound of viscera? Um, <clears throat> I would describe it as a mix of ambient with uh, elements of electronic music, obviously. Uh, bands like um, Mogwai uh, has kind of a prog rock sound in there, obviously Radiohead. Um, there's a song on there that was very much influenced by Bjork, so there's some of that in there as well. Um, but I would describe it as mainly indie rock with electronic and ambient elements. Um, my goal was to make it kind of an explosive sound where these songs build and build and build and then just burst. Uh, very climactic and big crescendos and that sort of thing. Uh, kind of exploring the whole range of various emotions. Um, I guess that would probably describe it the best, I suppose. Uh, any particular tracks that I'm most proud of? Um, I mean, I'm proud of the whole thing, obviously. Um, but I would say um, Reality Loops, track two, and The Messages We Left. Uh, those two I'm especially proud of. Uh, they were a lot of work. Um, I'd also put in, well, the last track too. The last two songs are older songs. Um, Departures is 10 years old. Uh, it's a song that I've had in my recording files for a very long time. Something that I, it's a guitar melody I came up with a, a long time ago on a looping pedal and I knew one day I would make it a song uh, once I felt that I was good enough with all the production aspects. Um, Reality Loops is a song I'm proud of because it just it was a song I spent weeks and weeks on uh, on the composition and uh, that synth melody that plays throughout it was actually originally played on guitar. It's a riff on guitar. On, in, I played it in a very kind of tricky time signature. Um, the drums are in 3-4, but apparently my friend tells me who's more uh, who's more savvy with uh, music theory. He says it's in 6-8, but um, it was a really tricky guitar riff to play, and I, I knew this, this album was going to be a guitar-heavy album, but I didn't want all the riffs to be on guitar, so I ended up transcribing it to, to keyboard and playing it on the synth, and that's what you hear on Reality Loops, is that synth 
melody that plays. It sounds like an arpeggiator, but it's not. I actually had to play it note for note, so it was uh, tedious learning it from guitar to that, um, at least for me. So I'm, I'm definitely proud of how that, how that turned out. What creative process excites me the most? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, the creative process in general is, is very exciting. Uh, when I write music on my acoustic guitar, that's always exciting if I find something that really... Uh, when I find chords that really kind of gel together, find something that's different, you know. Uh, I always like trying to figure out weird chords on the guitar um, and find ways to match them up with other unorthodox chords. Um, so, I mean, that's always fun. Uh, then also the process of writing music on my electric guitar, plugging in through all my effects and pedals and stuff, that can be very inspiring as well. Um, ultimately the most exciting thing though is when I'm able to capture these raw ideas uh, in my little recording program uh, in my studio here. Um, when I'm able to translate these ideas into something bigger and it starts to sh take shape, uh, that's what's most exciting is when uh, I'm able to do that. Although often you lose objectivity and the next day when I go back and listen to these things I often realize, oh okay, well it's, it's not as good as I thought it was because then uh, you're able to listen with fresh ears. Uh, that happens a lot find something that you love and you work on it all night and then the next day you're like oh that's not as good as I thought it was okay I need to start over and then and, and then obviously the the good material sticks you listen to it the next day and you're like nope this is still this is still really good I guess that's how you know it's worth worth pursuing song is finished, um, I guess when I decide that it's finished. <laughs> um, from a composition standpoint, uh, ideally you want to have the song already mapped out, otherwise it can be a very big headache. You know, but sometimes you're in the studio and you're just messing around with ideas, improvising, creating textures, throwing ideas on the wall. I mean, really, it's what it comes down to. Unless you already have something specific in mind and it's already structured and mapped out, often it's just throwing, you're just throwing shit on the wall and seeing what sticks. And that's a very tedious process and sometimes you lose objectivity and you have to step away. I always, I always talk about it in terms of like cooking almost. It's like you, it's akin to letting something sit and simmer. Uh, letting something uh, kind of um, you, you, you revisit the song a few days later and see how it's coming along, seeing if it's, if it's still good to your ears. Because when you're in the thick of it, you, you think you're doing the greatest thing ever, and then the next day, you know, it's not good. Uh, so like, I, I like to say that it's like I, let, I let the songs marinate for a while and vis you know, take a break from them in a couple weeks and see how everything's sounding. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say when a song's finished. I mean, unless you already have it all written before you even record, then that's very ideal. But if not, if you're just starting from scratch in the studio, then it's it's trickier. Um, and then and then there's the whole post-production aspect as far as when is the song done, as far as it being properly mixed, and all those things. And that's a whole other subject, and um, that takes some time as well. problem I've had to overcome so far? Well, <clears throat> musicians have it really great these days where the technology is so advanced that you can record full songs on a tablet uh, or even your, your, your smartphone. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, growing up, if you had ideas for a song you wanted to record, you had to, you had to buy you know, a digital recorder or buy like a 
four track or you know if you had money go into a studio and that gets expensive incredibly fast but now it's it's uh, it's so easy as far as the tools that are at our disposal um, and it's a blessing and a curse because on one end it's like okay well I have this program I can make all kinds of music but unless you know how to properly mix a song and edit and all the pro post-production aspects uh, it's it's very hard um, my biggest problem has been having to learn all that stuff because I feel like I've never been I've never been short on ideas I have geez I have dozens and dozens of recordings of ideas and you know some are good and a lot of them are not good um, and uh, but the biggest problem for me is always to make my songs sound professional um, because I don't have the budget to send these songs off to be properly mixed and mastered. I mean, that all gets into hundreds and thousands of dollars. Uh, so my biggest problem early on when I was learning to record was learning to record, learning how to edit, learning how to do all the technical stuff, panning and, and EQ and compression and all this technical stuff. Uh, things that uh, the listener actually uh, doesn't think about because they don't really know about it and you kind of take it for granted you hear a song on the radio and it sounds good and you don't think about what went into that you know but it went through a lot of different ears to make sure it sounded good before you hear it on the radio or you hear it on streaming or whatever um, so my biggest problem was learning to do that my, it, it was learning to implement my songs properly and knowing how to play to a click track, knowing how to uh, make everything sound balanced, not too bassy, not too bright. Uh, my early recordings all sound like shit because I didn't know what I was doing, uh, which is why a lot of the earlier stuff has been removed from my website, actually. Uh, now I'm at a place where I think I'm a lot better, um, but I'm definitely no, I'm no super producer. Uh, but... Uh, I've come a long way. It's taken years and trial and error, and you know, it's 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 hard because it's not enough to be a good musician and have good songs. On top of that, you have to know how to make your production sound professional and sound good. Otherwise, people aren't going to take it as seriously. It's going to sound you don't want it to sound amateur. You don't want it to sound you know like crap. Like it's just some person in their bedroom. Uh, you want to sound as big and loud as possible and balanced and all these things. So it's it's very hard in that regards. Um, but again, you know, if if you're under a label, then you know the label pays for all those things. For it, they send it to a fancy studio and have it be mixed and mastered and all that stuff. So, anyways, uh, the short answer is the biggest problem for me was just the production. It's never been. Uh, coming up with ideas or anything like anything like that, um, it's always getting the songs to sound polished and and uh, professional or as professional as they they can get with the limited tools that I have. Um, not to say that I have songwriting down or anything like that. I'm not some uh, natural talent for songwriting because uh, song you know. Writing a good hook isn't easy either, but um, uh, I think in this day and age where everyone is uploading music to SoundCloud and Bandcamp, and it's just it gets you get your music is lost in this ocean of other musicians, and you know everyone's competing, and so you want to you want to sound different, uh, but you also have to compete with your recording sounding uh, up to par. Biggest influences, jeez. Um, there's a lot, and it's just grown and grown over the years. I mean, in my early 20s, it was always like the big three, you know, like 
and the big three were U2, Radiohead, Pearl Jam. Those are my big three. And then over the years, it's 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 just expanded, you know, because I've been listening to a lot more experimental music and electronic music. Um, so I mean, you fat as far as big influences, you know. Geez, outside of those, I mean, you have Bjork, um, Apparat, Anstam, uh, and then wild bands like Deerhoof, who are, you know, they've been around for 25, 30 years, and they're an amazing uh, wild band that defies all genre and conventions. Uh, they're a band that I've been really, really in love with lately. Um, and then, you know, even classic rock still influences me. It doesn't really find its way into my music much anymore. But, uh, you know, um, so th those are some of the, the bands that's, that influence me. Um, Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor, you know, I love the stuff that he does with Atticus Ross for all of the uh, film scores. Um, their, their, their sound is a big influence on what I do as well. Um, and then for like, you know, more raw rock and roll, I mean, there's uh, the Dead Weather, the Kills, um, there's, it's just, there's so much. Um, I find so many unknown bands too on Bandcamp that are, that are really good. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, Tycho to a degree is sort of an influence. Um, but, uh, uh, let's see, another band out in LA, um, called Autolux. They, they're a really great band that uh, kind of influences me to a degree. There's a lot of stuff though. Uh, I mean, you know, I listen to any, anything from rock to hip hop to electronic music to jazz, uh, you know, baroque music, all that stuff. It all kind of just goes into the blender. It just depends on my mood. I, I have this approach where I like hearing something and I'm like, oh, okay, I want to try that. Okay, I'm going to go into an electronic phase now. I'm going to try that. Or, oh, I'm going to try to do something poppy, you know. Um, you know, see, see what... Uh, see what comes out of that, you know. I guess it just depends on what I'm currently listening to, I guess. Um, speaking of, like, uh, uh, indie pop, um, Caroline Rose is an artist I discovered over the last year. She's really good, uh, really fun, and uh, something I've been, someone I've been listening to a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I could talk all day about influences, uh, and uh, you know, there's just there's a lot of new music. I'm just always discovering, browsing through iTunes and Bandcamp. I mean, there's a lot. There's just so much out there, uh, and some of it I'm just very late to the game too. Um, but um, yeah, I guess those are just some of some of the ones that are coming to mind. Are there any plans for me to have vocals on future songs? Um, there's been some older songs of mine that have vocals uh, where I've collaborated with uh, another musician who goes by the name of Tape Recorder. Uh, a very close friend of mine who lives up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, as for me singing on, any, on anything, I haven't done that yet, with the exception of um, uh, over the last couple of years, I've I've kind of gotten into this annual thing with Halloween. Halloween's uh, my favorite holiday, and uh, uh, over the last couple of years, every October, I've done a cover of you know of, of Halloween type songs or festive type songs, you know, and I've done vocals on them. You know, the, the, the first year I did this, I, I did a, a cover of Bela Lugosi's Dead. Um, and I did the vocals on that. That was that was fun. Uh, and the, let's see, the year after that, um, I did uh, I did Season of the Witch. And that was also fun. So I mean, I do vocals. Not very often, <laughs> but I did, I did the vocals for those songs. Uh, they're just kind of annual things I like to do, like, you know, October rolls around and, oh, here's, here's a cover of this song that's a popular song on Halloween playlists. So those, those are two I've, I've done vocals on. Uh, as for vocals on my own music, 
Uh, I don't know. I think it'll happen at some point. Um, I'm not much of a singer. My voice is my voice is really with guitar and creating textures with keyboards and things like that. That's my voice. Um, but I, I do want to sing at some point. See how it goes. If not, I'll just have someone else sing. There's other people out there that I'd like to collaborate with. Uh, but yeah, I've never really been confident in my vocals. Um, when I do covers, it's because their vocals are kind of in the same range as mine. Um, maybe at some point I may take some vocal lessons to learn some basic techniques, you know? But uh, I don't know. I, I would like to sing. Uh, there's a lot of... I'm more comfortable doing covers, though. I, I like singing covers. Um, because I think everything's already laid out for you. The melody's there, and the words are there. Uh, coming up with a vocal melody on my own would be would be new. That would be foreign, and maybe that's a good reason to, to explore that and do that. Um, and I know I will down the line, um, but I don't really write much at all. I don't write at all, actually, as far as lyrics. So that'd be another kind of alien thing to me to do. But yeah, I think it's all timing. You know, this album Viscera was a timing thing. This is this album was an album I've been wanting to make for years, and it's just a matter of the right timing, being able to do it, being able to pull it off, being the being uh, in the right frame of mind. And when, when I do an album where I sing on it, it's also going to have to to do with timing and wanting to say something specific and using that as the vehicle to say it. So yeah, I guess we'll see.